Shaitan's plan is always very carefully laid out and he knows I'm going to keep trying with you, keep trying with you, keep trying with you until I nail you. When I get you where I want you, then I'm going to change my strategy because now you, he, you did what he wanted. Now what's the next strategy? You're a believer. By default, a true believer is one who regrets his sin almost instantly. If you're a believer, as soon as you committed the sin, you start telling yourself, I didn't need to do this. I shouldn't have done this. This wasn't a good thing. That's belief. Thank, your, thank Allah. That Allah made you think for a moment that you didn't need to do this. It's from Allah. Regret. To regret your sin is the one of the first steps towards tawbah and repentance. Regret your sin. Hey, I shouldn't have done this. What did I achieve by it? Nothing. Where am I heading through all of this? Nowhere. Why do I constantly miss my fajr? What about the others? Today we are a few thousand perhaps in this hall. I tell you from amongst us, there are those who fulfill their fajr correctly and there are those who probably don't. So imagine if I weren't and I see so many people fulfilling their salah and doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I should feel for a moment that you know what Allah has accepted them. Oh Allah strengthen me, grant me acceptance. Oh Allah love me so that I do what pleases you. That's a sign of the love of Allah. When Allah opens and makes easy for you the doors of obedience and the doors of fulfillment of what is obligate what is an obligation from him to you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it difficult for you to sin and easy for you to hold back from sin that's a sign of the love of Allah for you so con constantly ask Allah to love you when you've fallen first things first regret that regret should immediately lead you to say Astaghfirullah. And you know what has happened with Astaghfirullah? The same thing that happened with Inshallah. You know what that means? You tell a brother, brother, will you come? He says, Inshallah. That means no. I promise you. Nowadays, you tell, a, you tell people things that, are you sure you're going to give this to me? He says, Inshallah. The way he says that Inshallah already tells you his intention in most cases. If the brother, no, inshallah, I'm going to be there. Now he's probably telling you with a little bit more genuineness. You can hear it in his tone. But when a brother says, inshallah, those inshallahs with a little wink of one eye and a slight smirk on the face, it means no chance, my brother. Not at all. You know, if the guy's driving a Porsche. Well, nowadays a Porsche is no longer a big deal. But anyway, the guy's driving a fancy car and you say, can I have a spin? He says, inshallah. That means no way, my bro, not a chance, man. Not a chance. We do the same thing with Astaghfirullah because sometimes we say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. You don't even know what you're saying. And you're repeating it simply because you heard I should be saying Astaghfirullah after my salah thrice, after the farad. It's a sunnah to say Astaghfirullah. You must and you should. What I'm telling you to do is concentrate on the words. What are you saying? And you need to be genuine about it. Oh Allah, forgive me. That's what I'm saying. Oh Allah, forgive me. Don't just say Astaghfirullah, Astaghfirullah. You know, the Prophet ﷺ used to seek forgiveness with Astaghfirullah 70 to 100 times a day. Wallahi, you and I are supposed to be repeating it through the day, but repeat it with concentration. If you don't have the concentration, it's of no value. Imagine I'm just walking Astaghfirullah. You know, you get this counter, right? Have you ever come across these people who have this counter and they're talking to you and they're still counting. What are you counting, brother? I told one of the brothers, he says, Salaamu Alaikum, how are you? You know? And he's doing this with a counter. And he's saying, I, I say, I'm okay. What's happening? Are you doing your dhikr? Yes, I'm doing my dhikr, my brother. But you're counting. He says, Yes, I'm counting. What are you counting? The beads. He's counting the beads. I was about to tell, and this is a true story. I was about to tell one of the brothers that you know what you're doing. You're just like greasing it, making it a bit quicker to go, you know, like it's becoming a bit used. When it's new, maybe you might just struggle a little bit to push it. So he's just, and you're talking. That is lip service to the, to the istighfar. You want to do istighfar, say it astaghfirullah. The, any one of those could be your paradise. Any one of those can be your jannah. You see? So go serious in this regard. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me. And you know what Adam alayhi salam and his wife, Hawa, may peace be upon them. You know what she said? In fact, they, both of them. 
Rabbana zalamna anfusana Oh Allah, we've wronged ourselves. Oh, that is the most powerful thing to say. To say, ilaha al-alamin. What I just did now, I wronged myself. Why do you say I wronged myself? Because your sin is not going to decrease the value of Allah. Oh Allah, I wronged myself. I'm the one who's wrong. If you are not going to forgive us and have mercy on us, we are the ones who are definitely going to be the losers. You lose nothing, you gain nothing. Allah doesn't gain from your worship, nor does He lose from your sin. It is you who gains and you who loses. There. So surely isn't it the best thing to turn back to Allah? Seek Allah's forgiveness. Ask Him immediately. Now shaitan is still watching. He's lurking. He's very upset. Why is he upset? He was happy he nailed you. But now he's angry because you're a believer and your belief is making you regret. Why regret? Why regret? And this is why my brothers, he tries to make you do it again and again and again. Because each time you repeat a sin, you are normalizing it within yourself to the degree that there will come a time when your regret is depleted and it sometimes becomes non-existent. First time you committed a major sin, oh, you regretted it. Second, third, if you fall in the trap of the devil and he makes you repeat it 20, 30 times, by the time you get to the 30th, you're looking forward to committing the sin rather than regret. You just committed it now and you're planning to do it again next week or the next day. And that's where we have reminders like this that come in to say, you know what? Cut that cycle. Let's change it. Turn to Allah. You don't know how long you're going to live for. We all have to return to Allah. It's something people don't like to hear. But it's the only reality that is proven. Every one of us is going to die. That is the, only, that is the truest statement you can ever hear. And where are we going to go? Back to wherever we came from. And where did we come from? The maker, our maker, Allah. And so where are we going to go back? To Allah. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We all belong to Allah. We came from Him. And we're all going to go back to Allah. So turn to Allah. Shaitan is now upset because you regret. He's so angry. And as you seek forgiveness, he comes back to you. He says, oh, well done. That was so good. But you know what? You committed such a big sin. Such a big sin. You can't just be forgiven so easily. That's shaitan's plan again. That's shaitan's plan again. You committed such a big sin, you can't just be forgiven so easily. You think you, after you committed zina, you can just say, Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Rabbana zalamna anfusana wa illam taghfir lana wa tarhamna. Lana kunanna min al-khasirin. Oh Allah, I regret it. I don't want to do it again. Help me. Oh Allah, I won't do it again. Forgive me. Shaitan tells you, you really think you committed such a big thing. You think just by that much, you're going to be forgiven. That question alone is enough to destroy you again. What happens? You lose hope in the mercy of Allah, which is worse than the first sin you committed. Because one of the names and qualities of Allah, in fact, many names and qualities of Allah are connected to mercy. He is most loving, most kind, most forgiving, oft forgiving, and so many other names where Allah says, don't ever lose hope in my mercy. That's what he says in the Quran. So the mercy of Allah, he is Arham Ar-Rahimin. You know what that means? He is the most merciful of all those with mercy. Amazing. Amazing. Arham Ar-Rahimin. The most merciful from all those who have mercy. Allah. And you're doubting him? That's from shaitan. Don't ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. What are you doing? Losing hope in the mercy of Allah. So you're going against a verse of the Quran. And what is that? That's dangerous. Allah says he will forgive. Indeed Allah forgives all sins. So when you seek forgiveness, shaitan comes back and makes you think for a moment that you know what? You're not forgiven. If you listen to his whispers, you're going to fall back again and again and again. And then what happens? Now you're far from Allah. Because why? You start believing I'm too dirty. I'm too unclean. I've committed too many sins. I'm not going to be achieving the forgiveness of Allah. 
I'm lost. I'm already gone into Jahannam. Now, there's nothing left for me besides to continue this life of distance from Allah. Then you've fallen into the trap of shaitan. Come back, my brother. Come back, my sister. Don't think that way. Go back to the mercy of Allah. Recognize your maker. Learn about Allah, his names, his qualities. Learn about who is Allah. Learn about the forgiveness. Learn about the others in the past, like the story of Adam alayhi salam. The lessons we learn from this are tremendous. They are powerful. And tell yourself, I have a Lord who is merciful. That statement should not be said in order to push you to commit the sin again. Because you do have shaitan coming to us and telling us now, reverse. What's the reverse? Same shaitan will come to you and he will say, do you know Allah is merciful? I say, yeah. You know he's the most merciful? I say, yeah. You know he is the most merciful of those who can have mercy? Yeah. Look at how all these statements are correct, right? So now if you commit a sin, surely he's going to forgive you. Go for it, man. Oh, now we found where his trap is again. He's making us so hopeful in his mercy that he's prodding us to sin with the hope that I'm going to sin because I know Allah is forgiving. Allah al musta'an. You see another trap of shaitan. So don't ever commit a sin based on the mercy of Allah. No way. If you've committed it human nature, it's a different thing. But if you have fallen and you have ended up in the trap of shaitan, in any one of the ways we've mentioned this evening, like for example, you committed it hoping that no, Allah is Ghafoorur Rahim. Today is the day you can turn back and say, Oh Allah, the way I committed the sin was wrong. I forgive, I seek forgiveness from you and I won't do it. Allah says, I will still forgive you. 